the child first starts out just lifting their head and then slithering. And you can't even notice it sometimes when they're slithering and then all of a sudden you notice they're two feet from where they were when I looked last. And then slowly rolling from back to front and eventually crawling and pulling up and attached walking and walking. And then beyond that with the challenges of running. As soon as they walk, they want to start running and climbing and challenging themselves in, in more difficult ways. So we look at the whole continuum from birth to three in terms of gross motor as well as fine motor. So the development of the grasps from reflexive all the way to a fine pincer grasp that they can learn by the age of nine months if they're given the opportunities and the materials to help those muscles to develop and to help those neurological pathways to connect so that they can use their hands to affect their environment. Movement is the key. It's through movement that we develop our brain. An environment for young children really has to have enough space so that the, the environment itself is not an obstacle to their development. And often unconsciously we create those obstacles by making spaces too small or too cluttered or too crowded with furniture so they really can't practice the movements they need to practice. Sometimes the obstacle is an adult's attitude. Stop moving so much. Stop climbing up and down off the chair. Stop pushing, stop pulling, stop climbing, stop all the movements they need to practice. We often try to stop them because it's an, it's an annoyance to us. And yet we have to understand that to perfect their gross body movements, but also their hand movements, they have to practice and they need a lot of practice. So the environments they need for the whole first three years are going to change significantly, but the change is based on their developmental needs. The hand is so allied to the development of the brain and the work of the brain that sometimes I think we shortchange it by not giving enough to the work of the hand. Neurologically, children can make what is referred to as a primitive pincer gra grip, which is a very flattened kind of um, index finger and thumb grip. That's a neurological acquisition. To move this from this real tight, flattened, pinched movement to a refined pincer or what's called a mature pincer is experience. That's not neural, it creates a neurological pattern, but that comes from experience. This comes from neurological development. How many of our children are stuck here rather than being allowed to move to something like this? And it comes early. So we still, if, if you're a three to six teacher, you see children coming into your environments with very immature hand skills. It's simply environment that's caused that. It is not their brain. It is not, it's just their experiences that have caused that.